Hi there, this is Debashish, and I put this short video together to talk about one of the things that frustrates a lot of us when we're trying to shoot images of public places, specifically in the city. You know, you get there early with all your gear, you set up, you frame the image perfectly, and you wait for that instant when no one else is around so you can get a clean shot of the scene. And more often than not, it doesn't really work very well. And that's because public places by nature are public places. Everybody else has got as much right to be there as you and I do. But the challenge becomes, how do you manage to capture a shot where there's no one else there, but it captures the beauty of the place? Well, having shot time-lapse footage now for a couple of years, I've discovered that there's actually a very simple way to do so, and it involves a very simple technique in Photoshop involving layer masks. I've put a quick screencast together to demonstrate how I do it. Check it out. I've got a set of images over here, 152 to be precise, that I shot at the Block Arcade earlier this morning, and they're different frames of people walking about the arcade. Now, when I put together a still image, I don't necessarily want a lot of people walking around there because I find them distracting towards the aesthetics of the image. Now, to be able to remove uh, large groups of people, uh, from an image. Uh, Time-lapse footage comes in handy because since people keep on moving around you can use different frames and just take out the elements that work best. So I'm going to start from the first one. What I'm going to do is just observe which areas work and which areas don't. So over here I've generally got an image that's predominantly uncontaminated. Uh, just a couple of elements, these two women over here uh, this individual walking down the corridor over here, a couple of folks over here in the corridor, some folks over here, and then a couple of folks to the right. So I'm going to start off with this. I'm going to hit the 5 key with this image selected, and that's just going to mark it so I can filter it easily in Lightroom. And I'm going to go through my collection of images and look for other images where people have moved around and I can use them. So going to the next one, uh, the next image has the women uh, having moved from here, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that with a 5. I still need to find someone in that area having moved and left it clean, so let's keep looking through. Uh, I can probably use that one, which I'm marking with a 5, because that's the column which has not been contaminated. Let's carry on a little bit more, and at this stage we find that there's no one over here, and predominantly no one over here, so I'm going to go ahead and hit 5 over there to select that frame. And let's continue on. Uh, we've got people on the right still there, and we just need to find a frame that will work for us. So here's one that will kind of sort of work. Uh, we've got most people having disappeared from here, uh, so let's go ahead and hit 5 select that frame, continue to move on. Now this one will work to remove anyone from this corner, so I'm going to go ahead and hit 5 on this to select this frame. And I just need to see if I can find a frame where there's no one in this section. Let's keep going. That one will work, as will that one. So at this stage, I think we've selected enough frames. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit G to go back into grid view. And I'm going to go ahead and use the filters to look for anything that's rated. And that'll display all the images that we've selected as potential frames to clean it out of random individuals walking in and out of the image. Now the next stage is to develop each of these with the exact same settings. So I'm going to select the first one and I'm going to hit the develop module. Now I could go ahead and do this the hard way or I could use one of the presets that I've created and I'm going to use my architecture preset set and I'm going to use the one called naturally lit Victorian architecture uh, just to give it a little bit of uh, total variation. Uh, I am going to add a couple of minor items. I'm going to go ahead and enable any lens corrections. Uh, better double check and see if I do need to rotate this image and it looks like it needs a an ever so slight rotation probably about that much to keep it perfectly horizontal um, let's sort that out now I shot this with a fisheye lens and fisheye lenses cause 
walls to curve in. So I'm going to go ahead and crank the distort field up, just uh, cause that to flatten out a little bit. So that kind of works. Uh, I tend to feel that there's a wee bit too much yellow in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the highlight saturation and luminance controls, go to saturation, and I'm going to take the yellow out. So I'm just going to pull it back to maybe negative 50. Uh, doesn't look that yellow there. So that looks pretty decent. Uh, notice that I'm not going to go ahead and crop anything at this stage. So now that I've applied this to one image, I'm going to hit G to go back into grid view. I'm going to select the image, do Control Shift C to copy all the settings. I'm going to hit check all so that all the attributes are copied. I'm going to hit copy. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the rest. Do Control Shift V to paste settings. And what you'll notice is that all the images end up taking on board the attributes that I've applied to this. So what this has done is that it's ensured that there is a consistent look and feel to every single one of these images. All right, so having done that, I'm going to do a control A to select all. I'm going to right click. I'm going to do an edit in Adobe Photoshop CS6. Um, what this is going to do is that it's going to open each of these images or raw files in Photoshop where we're going to stack them in layers and use the technique of masking to remove people who are moving around randomly in the image. So here we are in Photoshop and it's gone ahead and opened all the images up um, one at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way to the left and select the first image and you'll notice that there's a background layer already created. We're going to go to each image, do a control A to select the entire image, control C to copy, come back to the first one and do a control V. You'll see that it's pasted in as another layer. So we're going to work our way through each of the images. Let's close that one out. So we've just copy the content over and do this for every single one of the images. Control A, Control C, and A, Control V to create the additional layers. So here we are, we've got the background plus seven layers. Now what we're going to do to each layer, we're going to go ahead and apply a layer mask. So just select the layer and click on the layer mask button down here. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to turn off all the other layers and just work through this image one layer at a time. So at the bottom layer, this is what we have. If we activate the next layer up and select the layer mask, we can now start working on things. Now the way on how masking works is that anything that's painted white is revealed. Anything that's painted black is concealed. And notice that you've got black and white set over here as your primary colors. So what we can do is we're going to use a paintbrush tool, uh, something with a soft edge, and we probably want to be a little bit larger. I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the size a little bit. And ensuring that I am working on the layer, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint over those elements that I don't want. It kind of helps if I have the correct colors selected. So there you go. Let's just paint over these guys. And you notice that you've got something over here that you probably don't want. We'll work through it. Once again, get rid of these individuals. Now there's somebody else over there. And we can get rid of these folks over here. Not to worry. This bloke's still over here having a conversation. 
optimization we can get rid of some of the crowd there. So anyhow, so that layer's done as much as it can. Let's activate the next layer. Select the layer mask. We've still got our paintbrush selected and just paint over those elements that we want to remove. Oopsie. I want to remove these guys over here. I want to remove that person over there. Probably remove that person. So that's what that layer's taken care of. Let's move to the next layer and see what we can work with. Activate it, paint him out again, paint these folks out, paint them out. And then on this side, got a bit of this person over here but that's all right we'll work through go up to the next layer activate it you see this time this layer is taking care of this we can get see just ensure that the mask is selected we can get rid of this person here this person over there Probably just keep that over there. So this has predominantly taken care of most things. Let's get the next layer activated. Once again, we don't need these folks over here. Let's see if there is any point in having this layer at all. There we are. Next layer up. Activated. That's why. That's been taken care of. And let's see what happens when we activate the final layer. Uh, it's probably not even worth having that in there. I'm not sure that's even going to remove anything. Uh, in which case, we can probably just get rid of that. Now that we've got all of this sorted, what we can do is go layer, flatten image, and that's gone ahead and flattened it to where you don't have any additional layers. You can now do any other sort of correction that you might want to. Use the adaptive wide angle filter to correct this for a fisheye lens. So it's a fisheye at 8mm with a crop factor of 2. And that will take it in just a little bit. There you go. Uh, I might choose to do a little bit of cropping. I might set it to a constraint of 16 to 9, which gives it a decent aspect ratio. So if I place that over there and bring this in just a little bit, just to make sure that it's centered, that kind of works. That ought to be about 
right. So there you have it. A completed scene that's been completely flattened. Now I could do some more stuff using some of my funky filters, such as noiseware, just to go ahead and take any noise out. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a generic default setting. And you'll notice that what that does is that it takes out any heavy noise out. And that brings it to a complete image. So there you have it. That's how I would go about removing people out of busy scenes to get a what I refer to as a clean image. So as you can see, it's quite a simple technique. Now, I didn't invent this. This has been around for quite a while. I just happened to see the light all of a sudden when I was going through a lot of my footage and realizing that I can actually use this for a single image of this scene together with no one else around. So I hope you found this useful. Until next time, enjoy photography.